Hello there, my name is Ellen Grimmie Trent and welcome to my channel. Today we're making a very simple and easy winter watercolor landscape using the wet and wet technique um, and it's going to have a reflection like it's on water. This is a kind of a quick fast tutorial because you have to work wet on wet pretty fast but it's simple enough that you can understand it and get the hang of it. All right, let's go. Okay, so let's get started. I have just a small little piece, like five by seven, of my Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I taped it down with Scotch 3M tape. Yep, I got out the blue tape today, people. And I'm just gonna grab a simple flat um, synthetic brush. I'm gonna wet this whole piece. Not super wet, just enough to wet it. Just go all the way across. I kind of want to work a little fast with this, so, so you get this all wet. Then I'm going to grab my Princeton 12, uh, number 12 Neptune brush, and I'm going to grab my indigo paint. As you see it here, here we go. Get this really loose, wet, and watch the fun begin. I'm going to go right across the middle. Kind of take off some of that paint, go back in with the brush, hit it again on top, hit it again on the bottom. Now working very fastly, I'm going to grab, you can grab purple, you can grab pink, it's like a pinkish purple I'm going to grab. I'm going to put this up here, swish it around real quickly. If you want to make a darker purple. Even more pink, do that. I'm swishing it very quickly. Get it up in there, this bright color. It's pretty intense. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back down to the middle and grab some of the indigo again, fairly loose. And go back. So I'm going to take a different brush. I'm going to take the Grumbacker number 10 brush and go across that middle with the paint. And this we're going to lift up and manipulate a little bit. Have it on a board so you can do this. Just going to dab it here, let it bleed down a little bit. Dab it in different sections. Grab some paint, let it bleed down. You want to give the illusion that it's reflecting the trees from above. Put a little water if it's not going down enough. If it's going down too fast, grab it. If the purple's coming in, that's okay. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Frozen song. Grab some more of that indigo. If it's too concentrated, it's not bleeding, make it wetter, and then it will bleed. Like so. See, it's bleeding down, like it's reflecting. If it's looking too much like spider veins, which it is, go in and grab some of that paint, take it off with your brush. Or you can take your brush, get it wet, clean water. Just go in and Push it around on the bottom here. And go in between and take some of that and soak it and dab your paper towel. As you see me going up and soaking and dabbing. This just takes a little practice to get that. It's fun, you get the hang of it once in a while. It's the opposite of what I was doing with my other winter, um, you know, the tree one where it was bleeding that way. We're bleeding this way. We're gonna do the same thing up top, but we want the bleeding down the bottom first. Now we're gonna go in and grab some more of the indigo. A little more concentrated, less watery. Can I go across this line again? You can dab it where you see the tree reflecting. Let it bleed. Go across, dab again. It's just a process of dabbing and clean that brush off. 
if you want to make the line like the trees down and then do the tree like so. Again, the line. So you know it's a tree. If you don't like that, you just wipe off your brush. Go in and get that, soak it up. See how I'm soaking that up and taking that away? Clean off the brush, dabbing it on paper towel. Keep doing that. You wanna put the purple on the bottom down here, you can do that too. Pinkish purple. Give that reflection of the sky that we put up here. And then blend it just with water. Take some of that away. Okay, so now we're gonna work upwards. Gonna take some of that loose indigo. Actually, I might use, I'm gonna use my Grumbacher number two brush. Get it fairly loose, you see that? Dab it on paper towel. Let's just start to slowly play with this tree. Just doing the lines down. See how much gonna bleed. And then we're gonna go try and make the little V's. See how much it bleeds out. If it starts to really bleed, you might wanna stop and let it dry. Now I'm just putting the line down. I'm just dabbing next to it. The shape. Put some space in between of the tree. So we'll have that faint tree silhouette in the background. Oop, see, I dabbed too much. That's okay, I'll use it to my advantage. I'll just grab some more of that and just dab next to it. Line down, dab. You're dabbing it, leaving some spaces in between so it looks like a fir tree. Brazier fir, balsam fir. Get this a little looser. That's okay if it's kind of blobbish because we can go. We're gonna go back in and really give it some um, details with the paint, with the more concentrated paint when it dries. See, I'm still just dabbing, so you get the silhouette, the very loose silhouette of the trees. Here. If you want to go in and grab a paper towel, teeny little piece like so, dab it here. That's almost like the sun setting. See that? Get the little moon right in there. And you just take that little brush, make like a line across, so it feels like it's on water. This is more concentrated on my brush right now. She gave me the idea. It's like walking on water. I'm gonna put little water lines like that. You can do that too. So the more concentrated the color on your brush, the less it will bleed. I'm gonna go in and grab some indigo. It's more concentrated. 
and put the tree. And then we're just going to do the, the jagged V's going down like a tree. If that seems too tight and you're not liking that, which I feel like I'm not liking it, what we're going to go do is go back in with another brush that's really wet with water on it, the ground back at 10. And we're going to dab with the water, like right around it, and then touch the paper towel, dab with the water, and touch the paper towel. So it's more blending, giving you that depth, but then again, not as concentrated. The tiny brushes are good for like the real big details. But like I said, if you don't like that, you want to blend it, just grab the water and just hit that. You can just have it where it's loose on the bottom like this. I'm just dabbing that. And then have the tips of the tree. Let me zoom in if you can see this better. So like I said, you go in and grab a very loose concentrated and you're just pushing down on the side of the belly of the brush with the tip on top. Just dabbing like this. Grab a little more concentrated color. You gotta play around with how, you, how loose you want it to look, how tight you want it to look. It would make more sense definitely to have it tighter towards the top. Then the bottom. Just dabbing it like we did in the other tutorials. This is such an easy thing to do and so much fun and has a cool effect to it. See, I'm getting more serious with the tree up here. So it's concentrated paint. Less water more paint gives that intense look again more paint less water see how easy and fun that is you can go in and add little lines, indicate water. You don't have to. If I want this a little darker on the bottom here, adding more of the paint. Taking it off my brush now. Play with the bottom a little bit. you get the idea. It doesn't even have to be these kind of trees. You could do whatever kind of tree you want. See, I'm making this look less like a Christmas type of tree and more of a tree foot leaves. Just play around with it. Give it some variety. You could throw in some trees with, that would be like an oak tree, little spikes. That reflect on the bottom down here. Again, keep playing with the, how much concentration of color you want, how you want it to look. kind of trees you want to throw in, like I said, you can get this 
If you can't use the tip of that, because sometimes the tips aren't skinny, you just go in and use your tiny brush. Put those spiky tr oak type trees in there, just to give it a variety. Change it up. Use the concentrated color on the paintbrush to give you that fine tuned look of branches. But basically that's it. That's how you can make a simple winter watercolor reflection. And it doesn't take that long. Keep playing around with the different colors, how you want it to look. It doesn't have to be indigo. You could throw in some ultramarine, but you get the idea. So now we'll take off the tape and reveal our masterpiece. Oops, excuse me. This tape worked well for this project. I actually enjoyed this tape today. So there you go. Winter watercolor landscape. If you like this tutorial, please share and subscribe. And thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you have a fantastic day.